Hey guys, Matt from Crank Engineering, and today I'm going to do an attempt to do a repair on this tool which has worn and is no longer any good. Now, this is not a motorcycle tool, but I want to show how when you've got a TIG welder and some basic metalworking skills, you might be able to do a repair on something like this or a motorcycle part. So this part here is actually a fuel injector sleeve out of a diesel truck engine and it fits into the cylinder head and then this thread here you screw it into the head to secure it and this particular tool here is what's used to remove this sleeve from the head because occasionally they corrode in or these o-rings leak and uh, they need to be replaced so the way this tool is supposed to work is these two notches in the injector tube are supposed to mate up with these two tabs on the tool so the idea is you insert the tool, so this is inside the cylinder head, so you insert the tool into the sleeve and you pick up these notches and then this bar goes through the centre and its job is once you screw it in, you can see it here coming out at the end, it forces those prongs open which catches the lip on the injector tube to help you retain it while you're turning it to unscrew it from the head. So let's assemble it and I'll show you what the problem is. So we can get it on. Okay, so if I screw this all the way in again, screw that right in. So now it's locked on. So there's one of the problems is firstly, there's some free play between this end here and the tab or the tang on the tool itself. So as you can see what has been happening is this tool's worn now because it's able to move and you don't get very good drive on the notches in the tube because of the wear on both of these tabs. And that's one reason. So the depth there on the tool allows it to move and then uh, whichever part is harder is generally going to win. So I'm guessing the injector tube is hard and it's wearing off the tabs on these tools. So the job that I'm going to attempt to do is build up these tabs with some stainless steel filler, stainless steel filler rod off, uh, with my TIG welder and then file them very carefully so that they fit snugly into those notches in the injector tube. So we've had to take an injector tube out of another engine so that we can measure up and modify the tool to suit exactly. So I'm going to be attempting to rebuild that shape into a rectangle like the notch is and also build it up a little bit further in this direction so that we can take up that play. So if the injector tube's pushed fully to the end, I can fill up basically that gap in there. So this tool itself is not stainless steel. It is magnetic, so it's some sort of... Uh, iron based tool. Um, there's no rust on it so it's got something in it to um, help it live and it'll be hardened I'm sure. Uh, so 309 stainless steel filler rod is a sort of a general purpose filler and I'll use that for this particular job. Um, I could use mild, uh, not a mild steel but a, an ER70 which is a uh, high strength steel filler but eventually it'll rust so I'm just going to pick stainless for no other reason than just to try and match it in with this and hopefully it'll be hard enough to withstand this use and the turning that you have to put on the twisting force you have to put on it to undo it from the cylinder head so let's give it a go okay just before we start one other thing I'd like to add is we uh, modify we've got two of these tools and we modified the other one the other one these uh, tabs were pretty much worn right off and we use a MIG welder to put a deposit some metal in this area and then we fold it back to shape to suit the notches in the tube now it didn't work and when we looked at it the MIG weld had not penetrated and bonded with the tool itself so this is quite a heavy piece of tubing probably three or four millimeters thick I'm guessing and to get penetration you need to apply enough heat so the reason I think a TIG weld will be a better result is I can concentrate the heat and I can increase the current 
of the welder to increase my penetration. So I'm hoping a TIG weld will be a better outcome than the MIG weld that we attempted at work. So let's give it a go and see what happens. Okay, so for those who are interested in the welding machine settings, I'll just quickly run through those. So we're running TIG on DC, so DC electrode negative, so the electrodes in the negative and the grounds in the positive. 2T, 4T, so 2T in this case is just uh, push the button and current starts and let go and current stops. So that's what we're using there. I'm not using pulse, we're just using straight. So TIG, straight, DC, 2T. Pre-flow time a few seconds on the gas. Peak current, I've got around 73. Now, it's a guess, right? Because I don't know exactly how thick that metal is. But I do need to melt it so I can get some penetration. So we'll stick with that. Uh, basic current is when you're using um, pulse. I'm not gonna worry about that. And downslope is uh, how many seconds it takes for the current to ramp down. And then there's gas after flow, which lets the gas run for a bit longer and uh, keeps the weld uh, clean while it's cooling down. So that's maybe five seconds. That's a couple of seconds. Now I don't want a whole lot of downslope because I don't want to leave the torch on it if I've got it uh, melted and I've got a bit of melt, uh, metal uh, deposited. So that's settings to get us going. So I don't use a foot pedal uh, most of the time. So if it's uh, current's too high or too low, I'll just have to come and adjust the peak current after the first attempt at depositing some metal. So let's give it a go. Okay, so we're set up and ready to go. I'm just holding the tool in the vise. So we're just going to build up some weld metal on this tab here. Now, I don't know exactly how much and where it's got to go because I'm going to file it back later on. So I'm basically going to blast it, uh, get some a pool of molten metal, add some stainless steel filler rod, stop, let it cool, and then just keep repeating that because I don't want to melt this whole thing. I don't want it to get too hot. I don't want to distort it. I just want to build up a bit of metal on these tabs on both sides. So let's give it a go. Okay, so you can see we're just building up this little tab a little bit. So we'll continue with that. And then once we've got something that's uh, an approximate fit, we'll take it out and we'll file it back to the right shape to suit the notches. Okay, so we've put a bit of weld material on both sides and the injected tube doesn't fit all the way on anymore. So we've built it up, maybe not enough, maybe too much, not really sure yet, but I'll start filing. So as you can see, I've put the uh, deposit okay on this side, but it's a bit too far to the left on this one, but I'm gonna fold that back and uh, just carefully and slowly shape that back to a rectangle. Uh, we might have to add some more filler material later on, but let's just give it a file and see how we go. Okay, so we're just about done. And we've built up those tabs and then fold them back. So there was about five shots with welding and then filing and then welding and filing and repeat uh, as required. And it fits quite a bit better now in the slots in the injector tubes. There's a little bit of free play there, which will help get it in, I guess. And I've made sure that these tabs don't stick out past the tube because this is in a recess in the cylinder head. So you have to drop this in and make it fit. So once it's in and the nuts done up on the other end, this fits in quite snugly. There's a little bit of play but that's okay, so you can't have a dead type because there might be a bit of variability between these tubes. So we don't want it to uh, fit some and not fit others. So a little bit loose is okay for this application. And uh, we'll have to see how we go on Monday back in the workshop and see if this, uh, this works. So obviously I needed TIG welder to do this job and I just used um, a couple of files, a fine cut, a really fine cut mill bastard file here and second cut file here as well and a bunch of needle files just to give the final finish so uh, it's not the same as a brand new tool in terms of the finish but um, it's uh, adequate for the job and this has got to function properly so that's the main requirement so 
Yeah, so this is not exactly a motorcycle project, but every time you do one of these little projects, uh, it gives you some new skills that you might better use on, a, on your bike on a later date. So I uh, hope that was in interesting. Thanks for watching.